Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Right, so when I think of Leave Insert trig um, and the theory behind it, not surprisingly for anyone who knows me, you know I'm going to go to the log tables. So the first bit of theory that's very, very relevant is this little piece here, okay, which is right angled trig. Okay, very, very important. Okay, and I'll go back for non right angled in a minute, but let's go through this one first. Okay, only right angled trig. That's very important. So the tools you have in your toolbox, if it's a right angle triangle, is you can use Pythagoras' theorem or you can use sine, cos and tan. Okay, that is all you have and that should be enough to solve any question on a right angled triangle. Okay, if you're to follow the diagram that's in the log tables, you can see the side opposite the right angle is called C. It's also called the hypotenuse. Okay, if this is my angle A here, the side opposite it is called A or opposite, and it just depends on how you've been taught. And then the side beside it is called adjacent or B, adjacent being another word for beside or close. Okay, so A, B, C, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. There is always a rhyme um, silly old Harry is one. Caught a herring trawling off America. Okay, so you can remember sine cos tan with, with a rhyme like this. Silly old Harry caught a herring trawling off America. Okay, or another one. Oh hell, another hour of algebra. And all it does is helps you remember which sides goes with which one of the trig functions. Okay, or if you have been taught to use ABC, you can just read them from the log tables here. It doesn't matter which way you do it, it's the exact same thing. So what are sine, cos and tan? Well, they're just relationships of sides to a particular angle. So this angle A can be solved by using this function sine and the opposite and hypotenuse side. Or that angle A could be solved using the cos function by using the adjacent and the hypotenuse side. Or that angle A could be solved using the tan function with the opposite and the adjacent side. Okay, they all give you that angle A using two out of the three sides. So it's not generally that one of them is better than the other or which one should I use? It's not normally that type of a question. It's normally what sides have they given you in the particular question? And then whatever two sides they've given you, you've got to figure out, do I have enough information for sign? Or is the two sides they give me for cause? Or is the two sides they give me for tan? Okay, and you'll see that then in the in the examples that we do. Um, if you look at the diagram, the log tables always writes the angles with capital letters and the sides with small letters. Okay, um, so that's a good thing to spot because another tool in your toolbox is Pythagoras' theorem, okay? And if you look at this, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, you'll see it's all written with small letters, which means Pythagoras' theorem only deals with sides. There's no angles in Pythagoras' theorem. OK, and Pythagoras' theorem tells you that C squared, which is your hypotenuse squared, equals the other two sides, the sum of the other two sides squared. OK, so they are your tools and they are your only tools for right angle to triangle. Now, what happens if the uh, example that they give us is not a right angle? OK, well, then we have this set of tools.
okay, which is a non right angled triangle. Again, labeled in a similar way to the right angled one, the sides are ABC. What you have to see is that side A is always opposite angle A, side C is always opposite uh, angle C, and side B is always opposite angle B. OK, and they just do that for convention. There is a relationship between the lengths of sides and the angles that's across from them. OK, you have two main tools to solve um, and a non right angle triangle, and they're called the sine rule and the cosine rule. OK, um, when I say solve a triangle, there's six pieces of information you could be asked for um, when you're asked to solve a triangle. There's three sides, A, B, C, and there's three angles, A, B, C. So when you're asked to solve a triangle, you're normally getting some of the sides or some of the angles or, or all of them. Okay, so again, sine rule and cosine rule, which one should you use is always a typical question. And my answer is, is the very same as I gave you for sine, cos and tan. It doesn't matter which one you use. It's a case of which one do you have enough information to use. What you'll find though for the cosine rule, again, do you see the way it's mainly written with small letters? So in the cosine rule, if you have a lot of information about sides, you tend to use the cosine rule. The sine rule, on the other hand, is an even mix of sides and angles, okay? And generally in the sine rule, you'd only take two pieces of it at a time, and it doesn't really matter which two pieces, depending on the sides you want to solve. But it's half and half, two angles, two sides. Okay, and then the last formula on this page is the area of a triangle. And now to be honest, this could be used for non-right angled or right angled trig and it's called half AB sine C. So if I use just this diagram up here to look at the area of a triangle, side AB is here. So that's side A, side B, okay? And can you see then that the angle that they use in it is what is called the included angle, okay? So you'll see when I put my highlighter around side A and side B, side C is between those two lines. And it always has to be like that. And it's a half AB sine C, okay? Uh, the same formula could be a half BC, but it has to be sine A, okay? Why that? Well, it would be half of BC and it has to be the included angle. And can you see that that's angle A in this case, okay? Or of course, I could use the other two sides, which would be AC. But can you see if I use AC, it has to be the included angle there, which is angle B. OK, so all of those formulas are the same thing. The log tables just gives one example, half A, B, sine C. So why am I telling you this? Well, it doesn't matter um, which sides you take to, get, to calculate the area of that triangle as long as you use the included angle. OK, and that entire page, which is, I believe, page 16 of the log tables. Yeah, page 16 of the log tables and those log tables they hand out to you in your leave insert. That is your entire more or less trig course. OK, what it doesn't do is the inverse ones um, for sine, cos and tan. So um, we will do a bit of practice of them. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our Level 7 in Electronic and Computer Engineering? This is a three-year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keep us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress on to the Level 8 in Electronics and Self-Driving Technologies and from there to the Masters. Check out the link below for more information.